Okay, hi. Now, in this video, we're going to speak a bit about energy released from fuels. Okay, so when fuels are burnt by combustion reactions, which you've seen in past videos, energy is released, and that's why we burn fuels in the first place. But the important thing is that not all fuels are the same. Some fuels are better than others at releasing energy, and we need a way of quantifying that. We need to know how much energy is released by different fuels, because then we can pick the best fuel for the best job. And so the first thing you need to know is that it's actually very difficult, okay, it's difficult to measure energy released, okay, to be able to measure the amount of energy released. And that's because energy is released in different forms. Energy escapes in the form of light, in the form of heat, in the form of sound, um, and so on and so on, okay. And some of that might be given off um you know, to the air, some might be given off to a container. So it's quite difficult to determine exactly the amount of energy that is released. So when we are measuring, we estimate the amount of energy released, okay? We assume that almost all of the energy released from the fuel is released as heat. And we then use a piece of apparatus known as a calorimeter, okay? So we measure using a calorimeter okay this is what we use to measure in a classroom or in a small lab okay in large industrial processes uh, they may use more specific equipment okay so again this is quite a common thing I think the book has got it backwards it's put the next step uh, the wrong way around it describes how we calculate it using an equation, but that doesn't really tell you exactly what we're actually doing. So what I'm gonna show you is the apparatus that we're using, which is obviously the calorimeter, first. So what we have is a container. We're gonna put in this case, it's gonna be made of metal because we're gonna be using quite a high temperature. Okay, so it's a metal can or container, okay? We do sometimes use polystyrene cups, okay? Because polystyrene is a great insulator. Um, but it depends on which reaction uh, you are measuring. Okay, we obviously use a metal can here because it will raise temperature quickly. It's a very good conductor of heat and the temperature will go up quickly. On the flip side, that also means the temperature is going to go down quickly again, okay? So it means that our window is quite small. Okay, and so that's sort of given away the next part. We have water, okay? We have water in this can. Water. And we're also going to have something in which we can measure the temperature okay this is a very poor drawing of a thermometer thermometer okay now this will be on some sort of stand okay like so and underneath it we are going to be burning our fuel so let's just say that somewhere under here this is our fuel burning okay so we are burning fuel okay obviously in the lab it's going to be slightly more complicated than this we need something to contain the fuel and so on and so on okay but this just gives you an idea of what we're doing we're burning a fuel now most of the uh, energy given off is going to be heat that heat will be transferred to this can and it will heat up the water inside the can we then measure off okay the rise in temperature so let's say that our, our thermometer goes like that and we've got a temperature reading here we can see how much the temperature has increased okay so I'll try and do this on the same page so we can see very clearly we're going to use the equation Q is equal to M C Delta T okay now this might sound like gibberish at the moment but bear with me okay Q is the heat released okay so this is what we're actually going to work out and the heat released actually equates to energy because we're assuming that all the energy being released is heat okay it is an assumption but it's almost true okay most of the energy will be heat right m is the mass of water okay so it's the mass of water that we have in our container c is what is known as the specific heat capacity heat capacity of our water okay specific heat capacity of our water now what does that mean well in brief it is the energy that is needed to raise 
the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, scientifically, you would say by one degree Kelvin, but one degree Celsius is the same thing, okay, in this case. So it is a property of our water. If this container was filled up with a different substance, then uh, we would be using the specific heat capacity of that substance instead. And lastly, delta T, okay, delta T. Well, delta T, the delta just means change, okay? This triangle symbol means changing, and the T stands for temperature. So that is change in temperature, okay? Temperature. Try and fit that in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's a lot to take in. So let's have a look at an actual example now, okay? Let's say, for example, we were burning a fuel, okay? So we're burning a fuel, and the temperature, okay, the temperature changed by... Uh, 30 degrees Celsius, okay, by 30 degrees Celsius, okay, so mass of water, so mass of the H2O, which is obviously just M in our equation, was 100 grams, okay, or let's, the question will sometimes say that we had 100 milliliters of water, okay, so let's say we've got 100 milliliters, luckily, the mass of water, okay, is one gram per milliliter, which just means we have 100 grams of water, okay? So if you see milliliters, don't be put off, just write grams instead of milliliters, okay? And then C, which is the specific heat capacity of water, will always be given to you as either four or more commonly 4.2, okay? So it's 4.2 joules per degree Celsius, okay, per gram. And we can write that more simply as joules per gram degrees Celsius. Okay, that's the same thing. Okay, so we can now have a look at the heat which has been released. All we're going to say is that Q is equal to MC delta T. Okay, so remember MC delta T. And let's just sub in the numbers. M, which is 100, times C, which is 4.2, times delta T, okay, which in this case was 30. Okay, and if you put that in your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 12,600. And remember, the heat is energy, so that's joules. And we could also write that as 12.6 kilojoules. Okay, 12.6 kilojoules. And that would be our answer. That would be the amount of heat energy which was released when we burned our fuel. However, one, one more thing that <clears throat> you might be expected to look at is, well, 12.6 kilojoules, right? Any fuel could release 12.6 kilojoules, just depending on how much of it you've got, okay? We need something which is universal, right? What we actually want to look at is how much energy does each fuel release per gram of the fuel, or per mole of the fuel. This allows us to compare the fuels as to which one is better per gram or per mole, okay? Because, for example, if I had a really bad fuel, okay, but I had 100 grams of it, that's going to release more energy than a really, really good fuel if I only had one gram of the really good fuel, okay? So, therefore, we have a look at uh, per gram or per mole. So, all I'm going to do is extend this question, and I'm going to say, in this question, I had five grams of fuel, Okay, I was burning five grams of fuel. Now let's have a look at how much heat energy was released per gram of that fuel. Well, clearly if I had five grams and it released 12.6 kilojoules, then one gram, okay, so one gram would equal 12.6 divided by five. So it's gonna be Q divided by the mass, and I'm gonna put a little subscript so it's not the mass of water, okay, the mass of fuel. So that's gonna be 12.6 kilojoules, okay, or 12,600 joules, divided by our mass, which is 5 grams, okay, and that's going to give me an answer of 2.52 kilojoules per gram, okay, or if you wanted it in joules, that'd be 2,520 joules per gram, 
Okay, so that's how many joules of heat energy this fuel gives off per gram of that fuel. Okay, now lastly, what if I was told that this, let's do it um, next to it actually this way so you can see it. What if we're told that this fuel is ethane? Okay, and now we want the amount of energy released, not per gram, but per mole of the fuel. Okay, so the fuel is ethane, we want the amount of energy per mole. Now this is the most common um, used uh, measure in chemistry, if you like, it's the most useful for us. But let's have a look at how we're going to work it out. So what we need is we need the molar mass of ethane. Okay, so ethane you should know from previous chapters that ethane is C2H6. Okay, carbon has a mass of 12, hydrogen has a mass of 1, so we've got two carbons making 24, plus 6 lots of 1, which is 6, 24 plus 6 is 30. Okay, so we've got 30 grams per mole as our molar mass of ethane. Now, we have 5 grams of ethane. Okay, so how many moles have we got? Well, uh, just quickly, we've got 5 grams of ethane because, remember, I said we used 5 grams of fuel, just so you're not confused there. So we've got number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. Okay, That's an equation you will have seen many times before. So our number of moles is equal to 5 grams, Okay, because we've got 5 grams of fuel, divided by the molar mass of that fuel, which is 30 grams per mole. Okay, And that is going to give us an answer of 5 divided by 30, which is 1 sixth. But I'm going to write it as a decimal to three decimal places or three significant figures. 0.167, okay, moles of fuel. Okay. Okay, so finally, we now know that we had five grams of fuel, which released 12.6 uh, kilojoules, okay, which is 2520 joules per gram of fuel. Now, if I want it per mole of fuel, I'm going to say that. 0.167 moles released 12.6 kilojoules of energy. Okay, and now I want one mole. So all I have to do here is divide both sides by 0.167. So if I divide that by 0.167, okay, and divide this by 0.167, I will get one mole releases, and do this in your calculator, and you'll get 75 point four five okay kilojoules of energy per mole um, of uh, fuel sorry so one mole releases 75.45 kilojoules okay so I'll cross that out for a second that means that 75.45 kilojoules per mole is the amount of energy which is released by ethane. That means that uh, however many moles of ethane we have, we can just multiply that number by 75.45 kilojoules uh, per mole and we'll get the amount of energy we're going to release. Okay, I will stress that this is not the real figure. Okay, I've only done this as a complete example. There are other ways that we could have done that. We could have realized that um, if we had five grams and it released uh, 12.6 kilojoules of energy, okay, well, one mole of ethane is six times that. So we could have just times 12.6 by six and we would have ended up with the same answer. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. So I hope that's helped um, you understand what we're doing with these calculations, what we're actually doing in the lab and what we actually are doing with our equations. If you do have any questions, please feel free to send me an email using the direct link below or post a comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. As usual, please don't forget to like and subscribe as there are more videos coming very soon. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.